Love podcast, hate nonsense. It's the Politics Joe podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Bravo. Very cultured. Very cultured. Ed Campbell. Holly Dugmore. Ava Santino. Holly Dugmore. It's a stellar lineup today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's a classic. The best lineup. The yeah. best formula. No, what did you say on the 100th episode? Classic formula. Classic formula. That's, Two that's boys, the, one girl. That, that's the, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We showed an order to go with. That was funny. The platonic ideal of a podcast is either me and you or me, you and Sean. Thank you. Not my ideal. The platonic ideal. Right. <laughs> Who's Platon? <laughs> <laughs> Good weekend. Yes, thank you. Did you have a nice weekend? Tip top. Ava? I had a lovely weekend, yeah. Great. What? Tr- tremendous. Well, I hope we bring high energy to the podcast. Absolutely not. It was disappointing yesterday morning, though, because I woke up and I thought, right, to Dugmore. And you weren't there. Well, holidays. Mm. By train. that I mean I was expecting to hear him on LBC. <laughs> just to mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. In the bunk bed, you share. <laughs> should just clarify that. The three of us live in one bedroom. Yeah, I mean, there's three <laughs> bunk beds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we the built ourselves con- content house. Yeah, they've um, we built them ourselves, and they keep collapsing on top of me. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you'd be on the bottom bunk? He can't get up to the top one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. Shots fired already. Sorry. Um, I, I would prefer to be in the bottom bunk. <laughs> yeah. <think>. And <laughs> how would, are we sharing one bathroom, like your old flat? <laughs> yeah, for pissing, shitting, and kissing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a rota. We're really uh, less than five minutes in, doing a lot of law, a lot of pod law. Yeah, <laughs> I think a little bit. I think that there'll be stuff that we've forgotten that they know from real deep on early. Mm. How many how many people do you think have listened to the whole catalogue? Two. <laughs> and it's not us. Yeah. It's that right here now, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um I've asked you how your weekend was, haven't I? You have, we've, yeah, we've thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, good. Thanks. We've done the small talk. Should we get into it? Big talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the klaxon. That's actually uh that's a BBC show though, isn't it? Big hard talk. Hard talk. Yes. With Nick Robinson. Mm. Is it Nick Robinson now? It was I a different guy. No, it's actually not at all. That's political thinking. No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hard talk uh, with Christopher Biggins. You know, on Saturday morning, the Today programme... I'm familiar with Saturday morning. Yeah, well, good. Um, so the Today programme opened with that line from Ray that's like, you know, Ray won Cleaned Up at the BAFTAs. Mm-hmm. They opened up with the, her lyric, if, if my body was a boat, could you steer that sailor? <laughs> <laughs> And it was Michelle Hussain introducing it. I was just thinking, like... Is that good? It's like, do they not know what that means? Who picked that? But is that a good... Here's a question. Is that a good metaphor? If my body was a boat... Could you steer that sailor? <laughs> what would you say, Ed? I don't know. Is that, a, is that, um, is that a good simile? How many BAFTAs have you won? Zero, but... I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever wanted to be steered? <laughs> You're goddamn right. Men are easier to steer because we've got built in rudders. <laughs> Put space down in a pond. <laughs> <laughs> just just to confirm, the penis is the rudder. No, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We could Women, have got along with no, it's not there, but. Okay. Women are better, boats. <laughs> Why airbags? <laughs> oh my <laughs> God's sake. Someone watched SNL this week. <laughs> <laughs> Boobs are back, boys. She looks uh, seaworthy. <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> I'd be like that door that they tried to get on. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want to talk about the Ipsos polling? <laughs> Pull this. <laughs> I say, as I dive into the ocean. <coughs> Sorry. Are we, are we going to do 10 minutes of our boobs back chat? <laughs> no, I think we're done. Why are you shying no. away from it? Bo- because boobs are front, they are not back. Right. 
Do you, think, do you think any of us will go on to have serious political journalism careers no, after this? No, I've made my piece of it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your Saturday four o'clock question going to be? Are boobs back? Yeah. yeah. That's mm. well open with. Um, Hi, Ollie. My name's uh, Royston. I'm calling in from Ipswich. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they never left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Ava, can you talk about the new polling from the Evening Standard? Can you talk about that? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's it's quite dramatic polling if you're a Conservative and quite wonderful polling if you are in the Labour Party. And I think that that is, is, is pretty much been going on for the past year. Yeah. So Labour are now on track. I mean, I should actually get it up because it's obscene. If this polling uh, were to be, um, what is it, put, put into seats? Good, I'm, I'm here Rep- for the... Replicated at a general election? No, because it's not quite that. If, uh, the, if you were to like do, is it the M- 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 MRRP polling? Yeah. Multiple regression. Wow. Get you a man Ooh. who can do both. Yeah. Fun bags and polling. Oh, I've got a degree in that. Just so we know. You can read which, it. Which? <laughs> both. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most <laughs> fucking A-level schoolboy check. Yeah, I've actually got a degree in boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Norcology. I have a degree in quantitative methods. That was my point. Not the boot thing. Right, so... Just a higher national certificate. (laughs) Ava, please, rescue this. According to the Zipsos poll, Mm. Tories have fallen to a record low of 20%, which means they're 27 points behind Labour. Now, if this was going to be translated into predicted seats, that would mean that the Tories would lose 351 seats and have 25 seats. Labour would have... Sorry. (laughs) Labour would have 537 seats. The Lib Dems would have 47. Sick. So Uh, they'd be the official opposition. They would be the official opposition. And uh, the SNP would have 18 seats. Good God. Do you believe, do you believe, like, when you look at, do you believe it? Do you think, yeah, I could see a world in which there yes. are 530 Labour MPs? Yes. I think there is, um, as the polling has been more and more consistent, like, I'm, <laughs> kept I'm more, like, I would be more surprised if there was a hung parliament than this. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I do. But... Pretend not to. I'll keep it on track. Don't worry. Steer away from that. Yeah, with that big rudder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I might walk out of this. <laughs> Will you two fucking get it together? <laughs> but as all the polling has become more and more consistent, the Tories are going to have a fucking terrible election and Labour's going to have a great one. That is just the greatest one. We've just seen the greatest poll for Labour and the greatest result. And it's still, I think it's still feasible. At this point, how box office would Ed Davey versus Keir Starmer at Prime Minister's session be? <laughs> <laughs> Might as well just hang it up now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we'd have, all have to hand in our badges and guns and go back to boob school. <laughs> but I think um, Ed Davey's at risk of losing his seat, isn't he? Is he? Could you imagine? <laughs> Who would the no, 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 just, no, no, just please, please, just imagine, right? The political life of a Liberal Democrat, right? You spend years in the desert eating shit. And for <laughs> once, <laughs> once, by some quirk of, you know, the outrages of British electoral calculus and the increasing volatility of our electoral system, and the Lib Dems become the official opposition. And then the exit poll for your constituency <laughs> drops. <laughs> and you get Joe Swinson. <laughs> And you lose your seat. Yeah, Ed Davies wearing a yellow dress. I hated that Joe Swinson used to do that. Mm. They all do that, though. Joe Swinson used to wear yellow all the time, they, and it was it was too much. Was it was too. They kitsch. literally all do that. Yeah, well, it's too much. Yeah, I agree. That it's too much, but it's not just a Swinson thing. So I think if I, I think that he's Kingston Surbiton, <clears throat> and I think that it was a Conservative seat. It's been flitting between Lib Dem and Conservative, and I think that there's going to be that that person running on the uh, post office ticket. Oh. So that has the potential to, to split a little bit of the... Uh, if she can really weaponise that Ed Davey is solely responsible for the Horizon scandal, which he's not, 
we've also got to blame Pat McFadden. Imagine adding, sorry, the thing I just said, right, about Lib Dems being an official opposition, but you as the leader lose your seat. But not only that, it is the <coughs> only seat that the Conservatives swing and win <laughs> in this is it, is it bloodbath of an yeah. election. See your point there about the postmaster thing. Do you think something that the Conservatives might have to reckon with is if with polling as big as this, people might this might invigorate people to vote against them? I'd be like, oh fuck, it'd be funny. Like be like that is quite a compelling argument. About like, the time let's line. fucking embarrass them instead of like, is that more compelling than? justice for the postmasters so you think that people might look at the polling and think i want i want to see how embarrassing i want in i'm in this is because this is diamond hands baby like this is funny this is a funny thing that would happen Mm. do you know what also just makes me sick about the two of you oh please makes me actually sick go on i really like talking about pat mcfadden you know that all right and then i lined up an entire point there just so i could talk about pat mcfadden Mm -hmm. and then you two just got back on your rudder boob chat. <laughs> you started that. <laughs> Look, all Pat McFadden has to do is raise a single eyebrow and shadow cabinet and the room enters a hushed silence. Yeah, but wouldn't that happen anywhere, but like to anyone? Because if someone like in a morning meeting just started doing, yes, as Ed's doing right now, that with his eyebrow. <clears throat> I'd I call think, an ambulance. <laughs> yeah, we'd all be like, is he all right? He's having a stroke. Do you want to know my favourite Joe Swinson anecdote? Yes. The, the way she got gassed up and motivated before the TV debate in the 2019 general election. Can a monster. Listening to Super Bass by Nicki Minaj. Don't, you did not need to tell us that. That is she's, horrible. <laughs> Some taxation, but not too much. <laughs> statue of statue. <laughs> Super Bass. Revoke Brexit. <laughs> Girly Swat. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember they kept calling with the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom? Oh, it's so funny. The worst part was that she believed it. Didn't she yeah, actually that was, that was the yeah, That did. was the tragedy of it all. Yeah. And the comedy. That they allowed her. Mm. So deluded, like Shakespeare. And then we had that great moment where Nicola Sturgeon was like, Oh, yeah. Screaming yes when Joe Swinson lost her seat. Yeah, that was hard. I don't think that was any, I don't think that was party political. I think that was pure. Personal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I fucking hate her. Yeah, I think it was. I never have to see that woman ever again in my life. Yes! <laughs> How do we feel about the Lib Dems? <laughs> mm. no. You really are pushing the boundaries <laughs> on this record. I think you're trying to find the limit. <laughs> I think that's above the. That's that's better than what I've done before. This. You think that's I think the rudder thing was like. You think that's Compared to the rudder, you're about to argue that what you just did was highbrow. Compared to is Sydney Sweeney seaworthy? Yeah, I think it was pretty highbrow. And to confirm, you <laughs> blew a fart into your elbow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad we've established that. Um, I fucking hate the Lib Dems band. Oh, I don't think we should hate anyone. Look, hate. <laughs> hate is a very strong word. I will accept that. I will accept that. I don't... The problem is they're very exposed because they don't have many policies. And then when they do have a policy, it's quite terrible. So, <laughs> <laughs> for example, in Oxfordshire, where Leila Moran is the MP, Abington and Oxford West, is that right? Sounds right. Um, I believe it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> So they had this big push where Leila Moran was like, it disgusts me that you're going to put a migrant processing centre in my constituency. It is immoral. It is disgusting. And you make me sick. And then it boiled down, like just a couple of journalist questions picked it apart. And it was like, oh, it's because you don't want any building at all going on in your constituency. (laughs) You literally think the whole thing is a green belt and you're trying to preserve the house prices. And so that's your only... Mm -hmm. So basically their big policy is... Protect the green belt. Don't build any new housing. Do something with the migrants. We're not quite sure what it is, depending on what audience they're talking. That's what they do. They speak to one audience in a different way to another audience, right? Mm. So they'll talk about con- controls and caps on immigration in some constituencies, and in the other one, they'll be like the humanitarian crisis. And it's like we can we can hear both, mm. you know? They're all like that, though, aren't they? Yeah, they all they all do that. Like Galloway, that was the people saying about Galloway, like the <clears throat> letters to Muslim voters, letters to white voters, mm. which people did. We'll come on to that. We'll talk about it. we'll talk about him later on in the pod. The reason I hate the Lib Dems, tuition fees. 
was as simple as that. Mm. That was like my political my political awakening was Nick Clegg. <laughs> no, I started getting into politics in like 2010, mm-hmm. and you think, oh, that's interesting. They're gonna they're gonna wipe tuition fees, and then that fucking cunt goes and triples them. Mm-hmm. I said to myself, never forgive, never forget, never forget. <laughs> Nick Clegg is on site. It is on site. If you're ever in, should be really on site with Blair though, because he was the first one to 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 put the pricing on in the first place. I keep trying to citizens arrest Tony Blair. <laughs> <laughs> we get we somehow get Blair onto the podcast, <laughs> and us three are pinning him down. You know who would be able to do it? Who? There is someone who works here, and we'll keep it very blasé, blasé. Keep it vague, mm. and um, that person has performed a citizens arrest before. Do you know what I'm talking no. about? There was a robbery in the house next door, and this person who works here performed a citizen's arrest on the robber and caught him and handed him to the police. I can't believe Laura did that. <laughs> Laura is hard as yeah. fucking nails, man. <clears throat> yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Good for them. I'd tell everyone about that if that was me. I think they have. Oh, okay. <laughs> Clearly, just talk to them. You, you've just you just told several thousand more people. Yeah, yeah but just to say, you were actually in that conversation when we was were I? told about it. Yeah, so it was at Sports Day. No. All right. Anyway, not getting anything. Carry on. We'll come back. I, I look forward to. So you anyway, we could get them down here, and they can do the citizens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Nice. You need to be trained in being a citizen. So the Lib Dems are on nine, Greens are on eight, Reforms are eight. I mean, the Tories aren't far off being down there in the like other category, are they? No. What's the other category? You know, where it's just like other fifteen percent, and it's just an amalgamation of all of the other minor parties. Right. We could we could be heading we could <coughs> we could we could be chai comming it. We could be a one party state soon. Mm. Yeah. What they could go full wig. But just be like, this. Sorry, this is a one party state now. Unlucky boys. We don't have to listen to you ever. Yeah, maybe this polling has the um, potential to have the opposite effect of what Ed was saying. Like, some people won't go, that's really funny, let's do it. They'll go, I don't really want... The Lib Dems to be the official opposition. Or I don't want one party to have 500... Can you imagine doing a vote with 530 seats? The whole thing just becomes like a fucking administrative exercise for five years, doesn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Everything nodded through. What will we do? Yeah. How will we make jokes? I don't know. We'll probably be in handcuffs. Yeah. I do think... I, I, g- genuinely, I think people underestimate how much of a fucking narc Keir Starmer is. Well, that like, we'd be the first in prison. That's quite... No, 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 I don't think... No, I'm sorry. I don't think we would be the first in prison by any means. But, like, eventually, the authoritarian state runs out of people to arrest. And they start pointing at people with shit banter podcasts. You said he was a runner. <laughs> I'd pitch like McCarthy and I'd be like, listen, I know what makes Les Comunistas. Would you rap? If it meant that I didn't have to go, I wouldn't do well in prison. You fucking... You... Pigeon. Yeah. Is that... Pigeon. Stool pigeon, is excuse that, me. Is that what we say? <laughs> You're still pigeon. I thought we called people rap bastards. I didn't know we had a. I didn't know that we had a routine. <laughs> I've not done this before. <laughs> I've never been snitched on to such a degree. You snitched this morning, rat. Snitched on both. Yeah, you rat bastard. Yeah, I said you were late, Maxine. <laughs> yeah, you stool pigeon. <laughs> you were both late. I can't be late. We well, can. A wizard is never late. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely late, Maxine. Ed came in this morning, sat down at his computer, and then went on Slack and was like, "Oh, everyone is very late today. I noticed." No. It was two yes, minutes past that nine. That is exactly no, what happened. It's not. I, well, okay. The, the message said everyone late maxing for real. Yeah. So and then what I said was, was you tinged. deserve a wedgie. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, you did. You know, you said you shoved something up my arse. Did you say that? <laughs> you did. What the hell did you say? <laughs> so to, she picked up this monopod that was on her desk and she went, I'm going to shove this up your arse. No, she didn't. She did. You did not say that. No. Fuck off, yes you did <laughs> I'm not lying I don't know what he's talking about <laughs> He lies you all the time Laura? Laura's not a rat bastard <laughs> <laughs> You've both got a thing or two to learn from Laura About ratting <laughs> Did you say that? <laughs> no, your honour <laughs> Isn't that extraordinary? 
<laughs> that's a HR violation. Oh, for sure. I've, I've got a list. Yeah, all right. Then the I'll get back one. and I'll say, oh, yeah, he, he talks about tits being flotation <laughs> devices. <laughs> he asked if Sidney Sweeney was seaworthy. <laughs> He then said that his penis was a rudder. <laughs> I didn't say my penis was a rudder. You said all penises were rudders. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think it's better. <laughs> yeah. You know what's quite funny is, uh, we said it a few times before, but the guy who does like media monitoring for the Labour and Conservative Party <laughs> and listens to the <laughs> I hope they're enjoying it. 20 minutes on <laughs> penis floating. Who said this would it? <laughs> that is so on the nose. <laughs> and possibly the biggest par you could say about any of those. Yeah, yeah they don't know. Do we think... They know nothing. Which party leaders know who Sidney Sweeney is? Nigel Farage. No, no chance. Too American. He's not seen Euphoria yeah, I know. White yeah. Lotus. Nigel's never been to America, has he? Want, he's I never mean, worked with Donald it, Trump. He's not like... Well, I don't, well, they don't sit down and watch HBO. How do you know? Because I can't imagine what he sits Nigel and, and Donald do on their Friday nights. How do you know? He's, he's not a big Madam Web fan. Is we, my I think that's a fair enough. We could text him and ask. Do you know? Yeah, we could. It's really it's so funny. <laughs> you could do that. If you Please do, do that. It's so funny. I'm coward. I'm a coward. Yeah, I think I'm too cowardly to do I don't that. Number. Do you want his number? Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he wouldn't answer them, would he? Because he doesn't know who you are. You have to. Hi, uh, Nigel. Ed from Follow the Show. Quick question. We were discussing do you know who Sydney Sweeney is? I think he would reply to that. Yeah, I think it's a fair enough request. Yeah. Okay. Where's your phone? In my pocket. Uh, in my crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pocket cam. <laughs> um, should we talk about some news or. This is news. Yeah. Oh, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Ava, just before we came down and and, and recorded this, mm. um, started recording this, uh, George Galloway was sworn in. George Galloway was sworn in. At the Houses of Parliament. He was indeed. Um, Where the hell was Jeremy Crombumble? Well... <laughs> <laughs> so he was sworn in and he was accompanied by um, Peter Bottomley, who's the father of the house, mm. and he... and. Uh, Alba party. Oh God, what's his name? Neil Hanvey. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> sorry, I what? don't think that's his number. <laughs> that's the image. <laughs> that's not him. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this? <laughs> Maybe that's just to put you off. Maybe he's changed his number. What number have you put in there? You can see. It's in five. Nope. That's not it. So instead, oh, he's of, changed it. instead of the six, it's a seven. Oh. The I'm, first six I'm... is a seven. Okay. Uh, that, is, that is right. Well, well, he typed it in wrong. Oh, he typed it in wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah fat thumbs over there. <laughs> <laughs> Old rubber dick over there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said <laughs> rubber, not rubber. <laughs> You can't see this, but Ed uses his phone the way that like Facebook mums in America use it. <laughs> Why? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm calling him. Ed <laughs> 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 from politics, go. <coughs> we were discussing on our podcast. I don't think this is a great listen. No, we can but well, I'd already do. done my intro and he interrupted me. Right, so... George Galloway was sworn in today to Parliament by um, Peter Bottomley, the father of the House, Conservative, wearing a Ukraine tie, I note, and uh, Neil Hanvey from Alba, or Alipa. Mm. Should have that story. Depen- depending on whether or not Alex, I'm just trying to fuck with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and he was reported, what, he, what basically had happened was, he did an interview with Sam Coates from Sky, mm. and in that interview, he said he would like to be Um, sworn in with um, Jeremy Corbyn and David Davis. David Davis said, I don't want to do, I'm not doing that because I don't, I don't believe in Chris Williamson's politics um, or his position on certain policies. Who is George Galloway's deputy now at the Workers' Party? He is, yeah. October 7th. Right, sorry, I was just, um, 
What? What? He gone? I th- I was under the impression it was to do with Chris Williamson's position of October seventh. Oh, sorry. That's what I. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, I just meant like in general, Chris mm. William. Okay. I can't imagine David Davis is a particularly big fan of Chris Williamson's other things, let alone. Yeah. What he has to say about. Well, no, but you know the socialism. That's all right. <laughs> um, and socially conservative, that lot, Workers' Party of Britain. Yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Their their, their blend of like economic leftism. Yeah. And then social conservatism. Mm-hmm. Financially redistributive, you might say, and socially conservative. Yeah, it's interesting how you categorise them because I see a lot of people describing them as um, like far left. I guess that's probably the closest thing to it. But Yeah, but I also want to say that a lot of people who are using that term far left, which I would say is probably the correct term for them, didn't know why that was the correct term for them. Mm. Like they think that they're like, they think that they're in the same wing of the party as like John McDonnell. They think that that's like a Corbyn mm. candidate. And they're not at all. They're actually very different. Yeah. Anyway, point being, so he said this to Sam Coates, I'd like them. Jeremy Corbyn, I've been told by his team, said, I have a prior engagement. He never agreed to do it. Mm. The Guardian then wrote it up by saying he will be accompanied by Jeremy Corbyn. Twitter goes mad and is like, that's so outrageous. I can't believe Jeremy Corbyn's escorting him. And then lo and behold, on Monday, Corbyn is not there because he never planned to be. Snubbed. Snubbed. Yes, that's sorry. the line. Actually, Corbyn like... is so low, he, he, couldn't, even, he couldn't, <laughs> couldn't turn up to appointment. <laughs> Lazy Corbyn. He was doing a, um, he had a meeting in his constituency, a prime meeting that was scheduled in, and I was specifically told he did not snub him. So the fact that the first word you've used is snubbed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, like, his aides are just, like, have nightmares of, like, Daily Express headlines being like, Corbyn, stabbed! <laughs> like, preemptively texting you, like, it wasn't a snub! It wasn't a snub. It was planned. Snub! <laughs> <laughs> Waking up, sweating in the night. Um, do we have anything else to say about that? It was relatively uneventful. I just watched it on the Instagram. He just sort of, he said the thing and signed the book and... Well, what did you that. think he's going to do? Well, he's... Took off his hat. Yeah, he did take off his hat. Is that not the done thing? Yeah. Take off your hat? Yeah. Well, but you thought... you wear a hat in the chamber? He's no. subversive though, isn't he? So you wouldn't think that he would walk in, hold up the Bible and then be like... Because you can also hold up a, like a supportive text, like a, a, a text. Like, he should have gone in and held up something mental, like the Magna Carta. The Little Red Book. The, um, yeah, the Little Red Book. That's really funny. That's good, that. That would be good. I don't know. I, I, you just you know that like with George Galloway, the only thing he cares about is himself, right? Like, yeah. He he it is self-aggrandizing to the max. <coughs> I think when he was at Bradford West, he spoke like I think it was only sixteen times as an MP. Like there would sometimes be like six months when he didn't speak in the chamber. He doesn't care about the constituency. It's it's about him. So I don't put it beyond him to just like. You went a Big Brother when he was an, an MP in. Ben- he was all like, it was like he was campaigning for Chavez in Venezuela, I think, when he was an MP. <laughs> Yeah. As Simon Danchuk put it, the former Labour MP, he said that he was the MP for Baghdad when he was last in the the Commons, and he'll now be the MP for Gaza. Imagine getting slagged off by someone who's been sexting a 17 year old. (laughs) Imagine imagine him having the confidence to slag you off when he's done that. That's really rough, isn't Isn't it? it? Isn't (laughs) You'd be like, imagine having a public profile. I was thinking about this recently in relation to the. Um, uh, th- this is a massive tangent, but you you know you know like the Christian Horner scandal with F one. Yes. And he likes to chirp, like he likes to give a lot of shit to like the other team principals, and then obviously this entire scandal has <laughs> come out, and my mates <laughs> were talking and being like, "How is he going to like take the piss out of Toto Wolf? Because Toto Wolf would just be like, you know, take something out of those those leaked text messages. Yeah. Like you have no you have no response. Do you know what I mean? Those messages, if they are real. Which is there's some dispute whether <coughs> whether the alleged messages, mm. shall we say? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. They are the horniest messages I've ever seen in my life. My bro was down bad. It's, it's just bad. Are you wearing a skirt? <laughs> <laughs> Show me the skirt. <laughs> is it grey? <laughs> <laughs> there was one. I was like, the per- the person he was talking to was like, I'm going to bed. I'm like, okay, Mrs. Boring Pants. <laughs> I read, I completely misunderstood the screenshots when I first read it, read them all, the alleged ones. Mm-hmm. And I thought um, that like the green was him. 
not oh. like the other way around. So I was like, <laughs> all supposed to be him. Christian, what leggings are you wearing? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I said, like, God, this, like, it really feels like she's the aggressor in this. <laughs> I don't know. I sort of. <coughs> you wouldn't want the world to read your horny text. No, I'm fine with it. Any text. <laughs> Your text flirting game is so immaculate. You would be fine <laughs> with the world reading it. I think that if you say you're okay with it, no one will bother you and do it. Oh, nice. Yeah, see? That's Reverse good, psychology. Oh, I'm like labelling myself as a target. Yeah. I'd be petrified. Yeah. I'm like, do it. <gasps> Does he reply? It's nice you replied. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? He said, yes. <laughs> I told you he did. And then also he said, "Odd question." <laughs> <laughs> I told you he did. <laughs> right, who can we text next? <laughs> Should I text go? <laughs> there should be a segment. We just text the ten people in the podcast, isn't any in question, and see what they say. Oh. <coughs> <laughs> who should we go for? So no, you thought he wouldn't. You thought he wouldn't. I, I thought you wouldn't know who said this idiot was. How wrong you are! Oh, yeah, look, maybe he's an idiot. <laughs> Do we think Nigel went to boob school? <laughs> Don't push it. <laughs> Don't push it. University of Life and. <laughs> Sorry, Nigel. And just a quick school. follow up. Just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> This is the day would he regrets just... ever replying to your text messages. <laughs> would you describe for his seaworthy? He'd hate that. <laughs> He'd hate that because of the RNLI could use her. Just, Nigel, just a quick question. Is a dick a rudder? <laughs> <laughs> if you attach an outboard motor to a man, <laughs> do you think migrants could use that? To get Stop to this. <laughs> Should we shoot all men? <laughs> Just in case. Oh. What, what so Farage... Oh, yeah, that's actually a good segue. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 well, you've on. ruined it now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry. sorry. Go, on, go on, Amy, go on, go on. So Jeremy Corbyn has instructed a lawyer to... Um, because Nigel Farage last week said that... Um, actually, do you know what? I should have... Did I... Oh, no, here. It's Nigel a... Farage claimed that... It's actually the top line, so that's... Probably I should have read that. <laughs> I always think that Laura's trying to trick me, so I don't look... <laughs> I, she's I, like printed out a separate yeah. note, piece of notes for Ava. Yeah, she's like, work that one out, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I will take your seat on the podcast. Yeah. You're really just a raw shout test. <laughs> she just makes it really... <laughs> Why is it in wingdings? Oh, mummy? <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Farage claimed on GB News that Jeremy Corbyn was a subscriber to the man cap conspiracy theory that the Jews run the world. He said, he actually said that phrase and then he said, you know who is a subscriber? Jeremy Corbyn. And he has now instructed lawyers. Jeremy Corbyn has. No, wh what do you mean? Nigel Farage has instructed <laughs> lawyers. He said he's now instructed Corbyn. lawyers. Yeah, Corbyn's instructed lawyers on Nigel. <laughs> Nigel's well, I mean... instructed lawyers on himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck off. Yeah. His sister's arrested himself. <laughs> Um, I mean, other than the fact that we've just repeated the the allegation. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Jeremy Corbyn obviously strongly denies the suggestion that he subscribes to that idea. I would suggest that's probably why he's instructed the lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> that subtext there is too obtuse. <laughs> it's too big. Laura's like written it down in a libelous way so that I just get completely, <laughs> I get completely ruined. <laughs> Embargo for 3 p.m. Jeremy Corbyn accepted the remark. Full stop. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised. I'm genuinely surprised he said that. Yeah. He's like, he's an experienced broadcaster. You know you can't say shit like that. You yeah. know, you just make stuff up. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually very unlike Farage to make a, a mistake like that. He is extremely careful in how he goes about his he knows what he's doing yeah yes he does that which is why the new statesman named him as one of the most influential politicians of the uh, 21st century 
He definitely is. A recommendation that Ollie Dugmore said it in 500 times until they put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> My letter writing campaign. You have still failed to acknowledge. <laughs> Dear sir. <laughs> Most influential political figure never, never, never Next to be elected to at the end of the House of Commons? Joseph Adolf Hitler. Hitler. No. <laughs> what the fuck is? Well, then the problems oh. that you gave. Can we beat that? No. Can it, no, no, I actually think, do not beat that. No, People I, need to know. No, I think it's. I think it'd be better if we just beep it. Why? Have you seen because the, then it'll be up for suggestion. Who I said? Yeah. Have you seen the viral video from France where, like, the grandfather buys his grandson <laughs> Mein Kampf yes. for Christmas? I have, yeah. And the dad's like, "No, Minecraft." <laughs> Mon père! <laughs> and he's like, where the fuck did you get this? <laughs> I also being like, how obliging a grandfather are you? Being like, well, I fuck. guess he wants to read it. <laughs> I guess my eight year old grandson is a Nazi. <laughs> I, and I can't. Do you think she's like super liberal parenting? Being like, well, you can't tell your children no. We are actually so... Nazi positive in this household. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Reich shame me. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be Hitler oh. maxing for real. You are so desperate to tell me the maxing thing. Yeah, but stop. I think it's so funny. Stop that now. We're what, going. Maxing? This is too much. Yeah, sorry. Okay. We're absolutely discourse maxing right now. Jeremy Corbyn <laughs> <laughs> replied on Twitter and wrote, We are a movement for peace and we cannot stand by and let these disgusting and malicious lies go unchallenged. Do you know what he's doing? We should actually do the updated statement, shouldn't he's we? Laura again tried to catch me out. <laughs> Psych, you never said yeah. it. <laughs> Laura, once again, I have Jeremy Corbyn on Twitter. I have asked my lawyers to take the first steps in commencing legal proceedings against Nigel Farage following a highly defamatory statement about me. We are a movement for peace and we cannot stand by and let these disgusting and malicious lies go unchallenged, which seems to be the same thing that Ollie just read out. <laughs> this is this is God tier. <laughs> right. It's right now. <laughs> but you can't trust her. You know what I mean? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Why did you decide that Laura's like duplicity? I don't know. I kind of got done with you, and now I'm, now I'm like, oh, I've rinsed that sponge for all it's worth. Did your anti Scots bias? Yeah, I was about to say. That. Showing. Yeah. So Ed's politics are actually more Alba Party than they are SNP. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is true because I actually cleared this line with him earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Katie McCaskill were like. That. I thought you you and Neil Handy were like that. Well, yeah, that's when we all hang out the three of us together. Where's Alex Salmon when this is going on? Yeah, well, he, Under the bed. He's not based in London. So. Oh, okay. He's on Zoom. Yeah, <laughs> he just hangs out. He likes to watch. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> Just three guys talking about freeing the locker of bomber. <laughs> Socially conservative <laughs> independence. <laughs> it's pretty <coughs> engaging stuff. Human rights. Open invite. Anyone can join. We'll just read the Zoom link. <laughs> Including the Lockerbie Bomber. Al McGrathy. If you annex Scotland, if you got the independence that you were... Sorry, the Scots? What? An- if the Scots <laughs> annex <laughs> Scotland. Themselves. Yeah. Right. <laughs> then you could, you could have your own Justice Secretary and then you could Alex chalk it and... Um... We do have our own Justice Secretary. Huh? There's a Justice Secretary in Scotland. Yeah, but who put away the Lockerbie, Lockerbie Bomber? Scotland. Right. Or is, oh, no, for the, for the Brit... Scott scores? I met. Well, that's a good question. Actually. He got let out, didn't he? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. It's yeah. getting Gaskell. Yeah. Compassionate, <laughs> compassionate discharge, oh, didn't he? And then he got the hero's welcome. He got what? A hero's welcome. I think Where? In Libya. <laughs> they, they, they just flew him back to Libya and there was like a parade. <laughs> <laughs> Who could have seen that happening? Who organised that? <laughs> like, it was a whole thing and like, the news had been like, we are a compassionate country, and although we profoundly disagree with McGrath's actions, everyone has a right to dignity in death. Cut to Libya. We'll do it again! <laughs> it could, the, the, the Scottish politicians are not a foresight. You know the exo bully things? Like we're not, we're not going to ban the exo bullies. <laughs> Oh my god, there's more! <laughs> <laughs> and they're biting people! <laughs> the XL Bully Midnight Railroad to Scotland. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the best things that they did. Do you agree with it? What? Freeing Armour Grey. No, I just thought it was just such incredible politics. It was like, we can't do what England are doing straight away. We don't want to look too. Uh, to England. Like we're just following them. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no one wants to look too English. No, you never go full English. No. No. Apart from at breakfast time. Well, then it's full English every day, baby. You know what I mean? Choo choo. Absolutely. I think you would both enjoy the Italian accoutrement to a, a, an English breakfast. It's, it's fried peppers. Ooh. They're really salty. Ooh, like and oily. That yeah. sounds interesting. Yeah, I think you'd like it. Sounds It's like a full, yeah, full English, but with the peppers on the side. Construct for me your ideal, ideally calibrated cooked breakfast. What's on the plate? Screw sausage. Yeah. Bacon. Scottish black pudding. Yeah. Potato scone. Oh, are you from Scotland? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, Neil Hanvey. A roll. A roll. roll. What kind of roll? Soft, like crusty. A morning roll. What, what, no, but what's that? Soft, crusty, white, Ed's dad brown. She made this for me once. Yeah. It's it's good. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's really good. So maybe maybe some mushrooms. I do you know what? I knew. Yeah, I think mushrooms <laughs> have to be there. I knew the difference between link sausage and lawn sausage because I have spent time in Scotland mm-hmm. before and I fucking forgot. And I had to so ask good. the woman mate, who was making me a hot roll at the weekend. She said, do you want link sausage or lawn sausage? And I, like a cunt, had to say, what's the difference? Oh, she would have, she'd be talking about you. Yeah. You look like a fucking knob. There's been a- oh, can we shout out the shop? The Scottish yes. Deli New Year. Yes, you can. And because uh, it's really good. I'd like people to go there so it stays open so I can have some Scottish food. Yeah, but then he it is, might get oversubscribed. He is such a beg for Scotland-related brands. I know. Oh, I know. Sorry, do you not like your clothes? I love my pirate days. <laughs> please, please send more. <laughs> please send more. They're sick. Yeah. But don't pretend that you would share if they gave you like free square sausage. For oh no, foreseeable. true with Laura. That sounds racist. It, well, it's race related, I suppose. I don't think it's racist. It's positive discrimination. Square sausage only for Scots. Well, yeah. If, it's a, if, there, if there's a limited supply, we deserve it more. Right. Surely you've had too much. Surely you should share. No. But you're here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are you okay? But <laughs> well, you're here I, in this room right now. Sat opposite me. <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, I just think it's audacious to have that much of a claim over the square sausage when shouldn't the English people who live here or from here who don't get to experience that delicacy. Get to try. You were verging on being so racist. <laughs> Why? <laughs> for the English, England's for England. <laughs> no, you, no, sorry, Mister Scottish Sausage for Scottish people. What yeah. the fuck? You're doing the same yeah, thing. I'm an, you I'm can go home and get country. one there. We can't. That's not home for us. Ava. Hi. Would you eat meat if it was square sausage and it was free from the shop? Short. No, shop. probably not at the beginning of the day. My we don't country, know how it's going to turn rules. out. <laughs> <laughs> if if I had a hypothetical breakfast yeah yeah yeah. go on i'd love to have a lot of american bacon oh streaky yeah maple syrup yeah waffles yeah and that really horrible sausage patty that they do i love them so fucked up so good yeah Yeah. so good it's just like a a waffle house breakfast yeah oh yeah that's good stuff do you any room for hash browns on your plate oh yes please (laughs) (laughs) oh very well here you are (laughs) Any room for a hand pounds <laughs> here, young man? Beans? I would have them, but I'm they're not I'm not enamoured with beans. Chips? In no, not with breakfast. How do you like your eggs? Fried, please. Yeah, but over easy? What? Over easy. I don't like when the yolks go hard. I don't love yolks in general. Oh no, but you do what you like a wet egg? But you you love the English yolk, don't you? What does that mean? <laughs> It's a yoke is like the thing that a, a cattle wears when it would like plow. Right. So it's like it's like a harness. So people say like the yoke is like the yoke of oppression. So like oh, you would say sorry. we have been under the Norman yoke okay. since 1066. So I was saying to you that you were a, a cuck for England, but yes. I said, do you like the English yoke? But now that I've yes, explained, I do. explained I, it, it doesn't do, work because I I live and work in England. So believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on your breakfast table? No, not on a hypothetical. Actually, no, I'd probably have a couple of eggs. And if you're and not an orange in the hypothetical juice. world, what does your vegetarian breakfast consist of? Like, it's just so miserable. Like, it's I'm, just so depressing. I'm quite impartial to a veggie sausage, you know. I had, yeah, but when you eat them all the time, it's not exciting. Yeah, but crazy. I did have, mm. I went to, I ended up, I had the power got cut in my, my flat, right? And so i left and went and got breakfast and we went to egg slot because it was the nearest thing to us i wouldn't normally go in egg slot because 
that put me off. Just the name <laughs> being called Egg Slut. It's an American thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's like yeah. 2010. It's quite millennial, thing. like ah, push the boundary. Oh, yeah. Let's be outrageous. Anyway, they were some of the best hash browns I've ever had. They might be like that big. Ooh. Like an egg cylinder. And they came in like a stack of six. Oh my God, they were so good. Mm. Amazing. I love hash browns. They're very good. Egg Slut's very good. Give me hash browns or give me death. What would you have, Oliver? It's pretty much a carbon copy of what you said to mm-hmm. me. I don't think you... Did you say bacon? Yeah, I think it did. I can, say, I can, I can genuinely leave bacon from it's the fire. Bacon. Wrong. I can leave it. I'd rather have sausage. If I had to choose between sausage and bacon, I'd choose sausage every really? time. Yeah, 100%. Link or the other one? <laughs> Links, yeah. That's fair. I, I like a square sausage as well. It is good. Why are we talking about this? I've just realised where we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, back to the important matters. Have you ever had an English breakfast muffin <laughs> with black pudding on top? And then a poached egg. No, it's never. God, it's God tier. I had it on the. Uh, I had it on West Drake in Orkney. There's a little cafe that, that opens like two days a week. It's random, like they just. It's like when they can, when they can Sundays, be honest. Yes, it's when they can be bothered. Can you get a vegetarian black pudding? I'm sure some. I'm sure you can. Sad boy makes it. All right. Well, I'd really like that if you want to send you it to. Uh... Haggis, which really tastes. Yeah, I've had that. It tastes almost identical to normal haggis. That's because. They're very good at making vegetarian food now. <laughs> it's funny, that, isn't it? Because you think, like, how do you make the vegetarian v- version of, like, catching those little things that bounce around up in the highlands? Yeah, it's too late short of the other. Yeah. But they've managed it. Yeah, it's amazing. Cool industry up there. They're trying to make it sustainable. You have to respect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how will um, Scottish independence Im- Im- impact uh, haggis farming? I don't know, they probably make, put, give more of a gift away from, like, say, dairy farms in, like, the west of England. Mm. They'd have, like, they'd be able to read their yeah. funds, I suppose, and maybe be more of an industry. I think it would blossom. I've always think you, you can taste the difference between wild haggis and farmed haggis. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Budget? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um... The budget's happening on Wednesday, I believe, Ava. Yes. What would you like to say about it now? Well, no, don't say that. Don't, don't act like you're appeasing me. This is like our political podcast. Oh, you must be new here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I know. I think we've got better at it. Um, I think, we, I think, I think, I think the ratio... Look, you've, just, you've just diverted again. <laughs> I teed you up. You declined. Yeah, so we're going on a tangent. I didn't like. I didn't like how you teed it up, right? You know, like, oh, have a, come have on, another get that okay. whingy bitch out of the way. You know, like, and then we can get back to talking about the things we care about, like square sausage. Okay, let me think about it. How I can how I can tee it up better? Because I said to you, Ava, the budget's on Wednesday. What would you like to say about that? Yeah. That's okay, okay, I got it. I got it. Ava, what day is the budget on this week? Oh, it's Wednesday, twelve thirty, right after PMQs. Fantastic. Ed, what do you like? To <laughs> <know>? <laughs> um, what are we expecting from the budget, Ava? We were expecting him to abolish non-dom status, and I don't think he's going to do that now. We're expecting, or well, backbench MPs are hoping for tax cuts, but he's not got enough headroom to provide those anymore. We are expecting a cut in public spending. Public spending was meant to rise by 1% over the next couple of years. He's going to knock 0.2% of that off. That'll really put a dent in those 530 seats, won't it? More austerity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These guys. These See guys. See how you like it. <laughs> <laughs> you will be grateful. <laughs> These guys are fucking, they are galaxy brain, aren't they? Yeah. Do you think, if there are tax cuts, let's say, mm. and if that doesn't move the dial, if it doesn't move the needle, and they're still in the mud on less seats than Lib Dems, they have to give up the game, surely. Like, what else can they do at that point? Yeah, but what they're mm. going to, they're going to do like, okay, so the only way they're going to, give us tax cuts is if they have it completely within the realms of spending possibility, right? Because if they go slightly out of the spending headroom opportunity, yeah, then inflation spikes again. We're not going to get an, an, an election until inflation is near 2%, right? Is that an exclusive? Yeah, do you know what, right? If you write for one of them fucking shill newspapers <laughs> and you hear someone say something <laughs> on a television station mm-hmm. and then the next day you write it up, you can't call that an exclusive. Let you work out that was. Mm. <laughs> Shills. <laughs> who'd, be, who'd be the funniest person to call out there? <laughs> Toby Young. Does he still write? Uh, presumably for Spike or something. Yeah. 
I think he just does the free speech union thing. Oh, maybe actually. Anyway. Um, point being, he's um, and then he's gonna. Uh, there's a potential windfall, extra windfall on oil and gas, another levy on their uh, their big earnings, which is a labour policy. All of this just feels like they're salting the earth for Labour to come in, right? Because if he introduces tax cuts or he cuts public spending, that means that if Starmer's to get into government, he either has to reverse the tax cuts or he has to rever- and he has to reverse the public spending or he just keeps them and he's in economic peril. Well, that's been his approach to pretty much everything else, isn't it? When it's like, oh, well, you reverse the police crime sensing and courts bill. Nah. Mm. <laughs> we'll let it bed in for a while. That's what he says. <laughs> that's what he's like, that's see We've got to see how the legislation's being used. I can't see him. They've already, they've already committed to maintaining the Tories' fiscal rules for the first two years of a Labour government. Yes. And Which there's is um, sick. It's cool, that's yeah. how, it's cool that's how parties work. But there's a really... There's <laughs> like a, get a conniving part, possibly, of, like, one advisor who's going to put in the, the budget, like, that they're, they're going to announce, like, quite obscene tax cuts, and then it would mean that Rachel Reeves would have to stand up and go, ah, these tax cuts, need, we need to have higher taxes. And then the Tories go, ha-ha! We've got you. We knew it. Ah, one seat back. Yeah. <laughs> 28, boys. Yeah. Who gets to keep their seat? <laughs> um, who do you think, who would you, if you had to pick out of all the Conservatives to keep their seat, who would it be? Swainer. Yeah. Yeah, big Swain. That's what, that's what I Text thought. him. Text him. I, I thought of his number. Do you know Sidney Sweeney? <laughs> no way. I think he doesn't he, know who Sidney Sweeney is. No way. All right. Knows. I'll hedge that he does. Okay. How do we get, how do we find this out? <laughs> I don't know if he'd reply to you. I think I've got. I think I've got Reese Mogg's number. You know. Should we call him? Or do you know? Are you? Do you want me to text Adam Swin? I'm loving the fact that you you just send the text that Ava and I are <coughs> too ashamed to send. Yeah, no, we... I don't have Swain's number. That's a shame. <laughs> we all think that. That's a Swain. <laughs> 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 this has been so fucking dumb. <coughs> I'm looking. What do we think of um, Sunak's emergency speech on Friday? Oh. I know I was on holiday. Yeah. But I still saw it. Um, the, someone must have tweeted this already. But, like, to stand on the steps of Downing Street and be like, there is too much division yeah. in British yeah. politics as the leader of... So this is the most obvious take. I know it's so baked. But... It's the policy you'll take. Oh, have we done this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Good work, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. Uh, no, I saw that post. Oh, right. Is that so? No, no. I'm just saying, are you not the leader of the Conservative Party? Like, is, yeah. this, is this, a, you, this is just, you're gaslighting me. I don't know. That's the, uh, we need to love neighbor. our neighbour. Yeah. And at the same oh, time, on. lock up protesters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and by the way, trans women aren't women. Right. See you on Monday. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Do you know what I mean? Fuck off. <laughs> I'm very ashamed of what I've done. <laughs> will I change my behaviour? No. <laughs> no, I will not. Yeah. Also interesting, because he's kind of doing the Suella thing, right? He's kind of doing the Suella bit that, like, Britain's controlled by extremists, hate marchers, Islamists. Mm-hmm. Like, is that not... That's not... That's what he's saying... Okay, sorry. He he sacked her for you know challenging the operational independence of the police. A bit, but you know. But hypothetically, if that were true, yeah, would you not um, question why he hasn't done anything about it? Yeah, he's in charge. Like hypothetically, if Britain was right now being run by jihadists, I think he should have said something. <laughs> why are you telling me now? You've been in there for a year, Rishi. He's going to be like um, Alende. <laughs> I've got it. Final, I've got it. Final broadcast. I've got you, his got, number. You got swag. Yeah. yeah. Hit, hit um, it just up. was taking ages to uh, to load. Yeah. Do you? But I think call him. Call him on speaker. I'm not going to call him. What pussy? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're not going to text him. No, I'm not. I want to call him. Give me. <laughs> Don't call him up here. <laughs> no, I'm thinking the number. Don't face it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I get it now because there's Ooh. cameras. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why are you doing that? <laughs> You need to stop it. <laughs> for him and Nigel. Actually, beat that one, please. The first one was a joke. But it was his number that you were reading out, so... No, I made it up. Ring him. Not ringing him. <laughs> Ring him. And what were we saying about 
horrible Mr. Sunak? Well, I guess it's just that. He's a nasty piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Just just having the gumption to do you know what sit I mean? and lecture us about do I, do I know what you mean? in public life. It was very silly. You know what else about? Did you see today in Playbook, they were like, George Galloway will be... Is enough. Lindsay Hoyle has been calling for people to be like nicer to each other in Parliament. So George, but bad news, George Galloway's here. Like he wasn't talking about George Galloway. <laughs> he was talking about you all. <laughs> That's what he was talking about. It's all oh, they're all no, silly billies. Silly yeah. billies. Mm, That's nearly as good it. as the other week when you said Lucy Goosey. <laughs> Do you ever just want to lie face down in a pond of static water and steer yourself with your penis? <laughs> right into a blender. <laughs> <laughs> right into the path of an oncoming ferry. With windows? Does a ferry have windows? Ooh. Is that the question? Does the platonic ideal of a ferry have windows? Because I know the platonic ideal of a podcast doesn't have Ava Santina in it. <laughs> or any woman. <laughs> yes. So, no, it's too... I feel like no, it... no classic. No, the classic politics your podcast is two boys and a girl. Yeah, platonic ideal of a podcast is no women. Right. If I wanted to like appeal to the audience and say something like, "Let me know if you'd still like me on this podcast," I think it would be like that time Rita Ora tweeted like <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> a million retweets, and I'll release my music, and then it's Does like, it... "No, I someone threatening to release my music, and it's not me." I've texted Desmond. Do you know that thing, <laughs> Jamie, He's, Jamie Heaslip, for the I Have Trouble Players, who did like, who wants me to start a podcast and it was overwhelmingly no <laughs> in the poll? <laughs> who did that? Jamie Heaslip used to play rugby for Ireland. He turned into the real like tech bro in his retirement. Like a budget Stephen Bartlett. You can't be budget Stephen Bartlett. Is he the, is he the then you'd be, be, you'd have to pay him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, very great. <laughs> Yeah, it's obviously a platonic ideal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we have anything else you want to say? What do we... What, what? Sydney, Desmond, Sweetie. Ooh. Compared to that. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we didn't say anything, but... Oh, we did. I think that's all right. I think we did some good stuff. Let us know if you think this is good Which bit specifically did you think was the... Was it when uh, Ollie said it was mean of Rishi Sudak to say Britain <laughs> was run by jihadists? <laughs> oh, no, but at that point, like... Ooh. he, I quite like this as a, as a format. We, like, we do the pod. <laughs> we give up. Then we spend five minutes reviewing the pod. <laughs> <laughs> it's like notes after you do a play. Yeah. Um, I think Sunak... If he's in thrall to the jihadists, they're not very competent because we don't live in a caliphate. You think that the jihadists would run it better? They think you think they do a if, better if a they, better if job. If they were in charge, oh well, yeah. <laughs> I actually wish the Islamists were in charge. <laughs> I don't know, as long as they rejoined the bloody EU, <laughs> <laughs> we will establish a caliphate of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> One currency. One god. <laughs> Who's like the biggest remainer? Who's like the main remainer? If I speak, you. No. Who? Who's like the, who's like the face of Remain at the moment? Do we think the new European would endorse ISIS if they pledged to rejoin the EU? I like how we did a bit like <laughs> can't believe Nigel Farage said that. Can't believe can't believe he said that about Jeremy Corbyn. That's insane. That's so obviously like a legal issue. Would the new European support ISIS? <laughs> if they rejoin the if they if they place to rejoin the EU. Do you think that that somehow makes what you're saying like? <laughs> well, we also have to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> like in the court of law, when the judge is reading out, you're like, Your Honour, Your Honour, Your Honour. I said if they rejoin the EU, dismissed. You're allowed to have hypothetical discussions. All right. What? You, well, that seems like the worst hypothetical thing we could say about you. You said actually said worse. <laughs> <laughs> You're the go-to for this. Also, audience should know this is what Ava's prepared to say on 
recorded <laughs> and she said way worse about all of us all night. but I told Ed today like yesterday I was chatting to someone and they were like oh like what do you do when you get into the office and I was like I spend the first hour thinking about what lie I'm going to make up about it <laughs> <laughs> and then I spend the next hour implementing that lie and then I go for a coffee <laughs> just so it's earth reputation yeah sometimes it's good that yeah I'm a pariah in the office <laughs> Do you reckon there's like? Do you, do you reckon there's someone in like client services who believes everything Ava has said about you <laughs> and thinks you are like a ginormous dick? There's um, a, a Twitch streamer has been cancelled. <coughs> I'm not going to name them because of what I'm about to say, but they've been cancelled, and their ex girlfriend released this whole video about like t- things they've done to them. And what are the allegations? <laughs> Is that he doesn't wipe his arm? Is it like he's got a B-day? No. Just, <laughs> he's just gross. Isn't that insane? Do you ever just despair for men? <laughs> you ever just like, what the fuck is wrong with us? Oh, no. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't really identify with the man who doesn't wipe his arms. <laughs> That's not like, you know, like, oh, men are in crisis. They're turning to Andrew Tate. I think Andrew Tate would be like, clean your arse. <laughs> That's why he's so popular. Is that not like the first rule of Jordan Peterson? Make your bed and wipe your arse. <laughs> yeah. Why do you have the confidence to walk around with a dirty arsehole? Do you know, this is a really core cool memory for me. When I was quite young, no, no. Don't look at me like that. You, it's not weird. I, I, I was watching that program that's like, what's that doctor program that they used to be on Channel 4? Weird bodies. Like, I mean, weird bodies. Embarrassing bodies. Embarrassing bodies. And this guy had, like, scabs all over his fore- uh, his um, his head. And I remember this so vividly, this program. He had scabs all over his head. And she's like, oh, I think you need a cream or whatever. And then she's like, the diagnosis has come back, Stephen. And it's because you keep scratching your arse and then scratching your head. <laughs> <laughs> I am not joking. You know, watch this when I was really young and it stayed with me. <laughs> This is a real thing that went out on Channel 4. Would you not? What would you do? I think we should abolish Channel 4. I'm back. <laughs> I'm on side with Nadine again. What if on like a, a, an episode of Naked Attraction? <laughs> He's just like got fucking swamp. You know when they're like oh, turn, oh, like turn. Oh, <laughs> it clearly smells. Smeared, smeared with shit. She's it's like, spin. I'd like to see green. Could you turn round for me? And it's like, oh my god. Oh. Do you think the like production team for Naked Attraction? Do you think they've ever like done someone a solid and be like, "You need to wash"? Oh, I mean, like, <laughs> been like a fluffer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think they. Have you watched the show? Do you think it's four men with erections? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine! <laughs> oh my god! <coughs> <laughs> this is just what it's like <laughs> it's gone up of like the first four <coughs> and the last guy he's just fucking rock up and they're all like looking at each other like <laughs> it's the kind of thing you can imagine someone being like quite anxious they're just taking a Viagra of a boy <laughs> they like that <laughs> they're listening live <sighs> we're banning that <laughs> so, how do you think the podcast What went? would be worse? <laughs> you, you start with an erection. <laughs> oh, you get one. <laughs> Just <laughs> but there's like, like the process of it, like, you know, happening. And then there's like, who's the presenter? Anna. Oh. Anna. <coughs> All right, so the presenter and the candidate are standing there and they have to just ignore. <laughs> Sorry. The, the guy in the red box. So cut, cut. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> I'm, have you got a semi? <laughs> are you hard? No, this is it, actually. <laughs> this is fool math. <laughs> this is my tiller. <laughs> you should see me on the high sea. It's like the Titanic. It had a really small rudder, the Titanic, didn't it? It? That was the that couldn't that's why it couldn't get round the iceberg. The rudder was too small for the boat. Do you think I'm making this up? No. I'm not. See if you're making the biggest boat of all time. Why are you making it why are you 
Shipping out of the rudder. Why would you ever doubt that I wouldn't know how the Titanic sank? Sorry, do you have a reputation for spreading <laughs> vicious lies on this podcast? No, <laughs> sure. But how do I feel about transport? I feel quite strongly, about transport. strongly about transport. So I would know if the rudder was big enough for that boat. But and it sorry. wasn't. Maybe the captain believed that it wasn't the size of the boat that was important. It's <laughs> used. <laughs> yeah, it's how you use it, yeah. Women like this. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, that's too big. <laughs> Tribes, full steam at an iceberg. <laughs> Men would literally sink their boat, rather sink their boat than go to the therapy or something shit like that. Mm. Is this the end of it? I think so. Yeah, it's been probably. Quite a long time. This is probably the end of it, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> oh, do we end with the balls? I think so. Yeah, okay. That's two out. Right. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. See you on the subreddit. Rate us five stars. Yeah, on the subreddit where uh, we'll be engaging in some of the uh, activities we spoke about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe leave a comment. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the outro to all our videos now. <laughs> You get credits running across the front. Yeah. <laughs> Featuring <laughs> Nigel Farage and Desmond Swain. <laughs> Drop a comment if you think that Ed looks like that little boy from Polar Express. <laughs> Read the joe.co.uk website. You like politics, Joe? Go to football, Joe. <laughs> Anyone see the football this weekend? Yes. I think it's the best one ever.